Hey everybody, it's episode two of Ham Radio Dude. Today we're going to talk about how to correct DTMF issues in All-Star. And before we get started, I want to thank you for subscribing if you did so in the last video. We didn't quite hit that 100 subscriber goal, but don't worry, as soon as we do hit 100 subscribers, anybody who has commented on the first video letting me know they subscribed will be entered in the drawing for the free sherry. And so I do want to talk about how I came across this DTMF issue in All-Star, which isn't really an All-Star issue at all, and how I corrected it. So a little backstory is, I went to Arizona this last week, and I intentionally didn't bring an amateur radio, but I did bring our transceiver, but I did bring uh, my Sherry device and my All-Star device. And the purpose for that was, is I wanted to buy new radios for reviews on this channel. I ended up picking up a couple of Yezu radios, the FT65R and I think the FT4X. Uh, some lower end radios that I want to compare to the Baofengs, but I'm not going to do that today. That'll be in a video later in the week. But when I got this FT65 and I got it all programmed up, I was trying to connect to some all-star nodes and I just wasn't able to. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And so I did a little research and I found that uh, there are a few settings here within uh, all-star uh, SSH or putty client that you need to change if you get a new radio or you may need to change rather. And so I just want to walk you through all these settings here. Now to get started, the first thing you're going to do is open up your SSH client. Again, in my case, it's putty. And what you're going to do is you're going to SSH into your all-star node, which as I discussed last week, I assume you're already familiar with. Once you're in the admin menu list, the first thing we're going to do for the sake of this video is we're going to actually see what's going on in the client when I touch these DTMF tones. Go ahead and go down to step 11, which again is the command line interface client. And when we hit enter here, we're presented with a command prompt. And what we should see is as we hit the keypad down, we should see all star node actually acknowledge the fact that it saw something pick up the phone or pick up the radio, um, talk to the Sherry device, and then hang up. And we do see that. What that tells me is this radio is at least communicating with Sherry and All Star. To take it a step further, if we hold down the push to talk and we hit all the keys on the keypad, we should see DTMF tones. All I saw there was a hang up. Now I should have actually seen each DTMF tone as it was pressed and what the button was that was pressed. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in quit right here. Before I do, I'm going to actually adjust this screen too for the next step and you'll see why in just a second. I just hope it's still large enough for you to see. Okay, so when I hit quit here and I hit enter, I'm now back into the admin menu list. And in the admin menu list, we're going to go down to step 12, which we did last week as well. Run the simple USB to menu application. And just like last week, the first thing we're going to do is set our RX voice levels using display. Uh, one more time, I'm going to move this over a little bit so you can see it. So here we are with the same thing we saw last week, where as we key up, we could try to see where our levels are. Ideally, we want to be around five kilohertz. And I have the suspicion that this radio is going to be very hot. Uh, and I say that because last week when I programmed the Sherry and the All-Star node using the Baofeng, the Baofeng had no miking and had very poor audio, very low audio. So as I key up and I identify, we want to see kind of an average of where my levels are. This is W9FFF testing. It appears I'm way over 5 kilohertz. In fact, it appears I'm almost maxing out the actual RX voice levels. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit enter within PuTTY. And it says the current setting is 800 on the RX channel. Set a new value. Uh, I'm going to bring it down to 650. Let's see where that's at. Ideally, I want to be somewhere around 5 kilohertz. And I'm going to try again. This is W9FFF testing. Uh, I did actually max that out a little bit, but most of the times it seemed like it was in a relatively okay spot. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to hit enter again. Let me bring this up here so you guys can see it. 
It says, please make your selection now. Let's go ahead and write this by hitting W, and then we're going to hit zero to exit this menu. We are then prompted back into the admin menu list, and we want to go to that command line interface again, or step 11. Now we want to see if we could actually show DTMF tones. So run the asterisk CLI client, and we're going to go through the DTMF tones again and just hit one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth, just to make sure that they're all registering. So I'm going to start with P1, P2, P3, P4, and then I'm going to go one through nine. Um, then I'm going to do star zero and pound. That looks great. As you can see, my audio levels were very high, and what I assume is happening is they were so overmodulated that Sherry and All Star Node couldn't even process what they were. So now we're at a much better level. We're going to go ahead and we're going to type in quit right here and get back to the main admin menu list. Now that we're back in the main admin menu list, but before we exit everything, I just want to make sure that I'm able to connect to All Star Nodes now with my keypad on my radio. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to key down. I'm going to hit star three, which is the connect command. And then I'm going to type in the node number I want to test to or connect to. So. Node two, nine, six, four, five, connected to node four, seven, six, eight, eight. So we've confirmed that we're able now to use DTMF tones. Every DTMF tone on my keypad was working. I was able to connect to, a, to an all-star node. And I just want to show you that you, don't, you might not always have to adjust the RX levels, but with a radio as poor as the Baofeng, I definitely had to adjust them. So now I just pulled up the FT4X, and I'm going to do the same thing. Just I want to run through real quick for my own purposes in testing, just to see if I'm able to see everything as as it is so once again i'm going to go ahead i'm going to move this over okay we can see the asterisk client and i'm just going to hit every button well first i'm going to disconnect from the node i just connected to so they don't have to hear annoying dtmf tones so i'm going to hit star one two nine six four five which is the node star one is the node command to disconnect two, nine six four five disconnected that's great so we know it's disconnecting now and now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that all the buttons on the keypad work. Well, we are golden. We're in a good spot now with the RX levels on the All-Star node. With it, that's the video, guys. Uh, that should be all there is to it except to type in quit right here. And once you type in quit right here, you can then go down to, let's see, exit log out, which I got to move this over one more time for you. There we go. Exit log out. We're now out of the All Star node. We're out of our SSH client. And we're ready to get on the air with the All Star. Now, I don't want to constantly do All Star videos. I just thought this was a little cool trick to learn. And I'm sure there's somebody else out there having this, this issue. Uh, I do know it helped me out a lot on the on the road uh, when I found the guide to correct this issue. And I just wanted to transfer it to video because there are a lot of people who maybe don't learn the same way as others as far as reading goes versus visually seeing things. That's it, guys. I do want to thank you again for checking out this video, checking out this channel and subscribing and liking and all that good stuff. But before I do take off completely, I want to give you an update on some of the ideas I had for this channel moving forward. I already mentioned I'm going to be doing some reviews on things like Yezus versus Baofengs, uh, cheaper end radios, and why you should maybe go with one versus the other. But I also have an idea for a live stream or a couple of different live streams, actually, which would involve game shows where you would have the potential to win gift certificates to Ham Radio Outlet or Giga Parts. Uh, for example, the first one I was thinking of was Deal or No Deal, where you pick a random briefcase and throughout the game you're made other offers, but uh, you have the potential to win up to a $100 gift certificate to HRO or to Gigaparts.
And of course, the other idea I had for a live stream would be who wants to be a millionaire, but with ham radio questions ranging from the general question pool all the way up to the extra question pool. And obviously, the more questions you get right, that's your potential for winning that gift certificate. Or uh, you could win a gift certificate up to a certain amount. I think it would be about 100 bucks. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I, I personally think that would be a really cool live stream. The contestants would be chosen randomly for anybody who is in the live stream. And they would have to have a, a webcam and a microphone in order to participate. Anyway, with that, uh, I'm going to be posting a video later in this week. Until then, 73.